For this final look between MMPR and Jew Ranger, I'll be discussing the monster's design philosophy, where did Zordon come from, the lost battle bikes, the origin of the rad bug, and details that Power Rangers tends to not do. In my previous video, I had mentioned that Power Rangers simplified the series, so a lot of details from Jew Ranger feel a little confusing and random. The biggest thing is the monsters the Rangers fight. Now, this is not an insult to Power Rangers. There have been many memorable monster names. I Guy, to Pudgy Pig, but there is a theme that is put into each of the monsters. Jew Rangers base them from mystical creatures and Greek myths. The Dora monsters are named after Bandora and what they're based off. Pudgy Pig is called Dora Xerxes, Snizzard is Dora Landon, and Gotan is Dora Chimera. If you don't know, Xerxes is a Greek goddess that transformed Odysseus and his men into swine. That's why Pudgy Pig wears a Roman helmet. Landon was a Greek dragon that guarded golden apples, and Chimera is a Greek beast that has multiple animals fused together. In the second half of season one, they introduced a more powerful clay that created the Super Putties and the Frankenstein monster. This clay was called Dokita, so this set of monsters are the Dokita Dora monsters. This got ignored after the two MMPR episodes, but did continue behind the scenes, which is why the Mega Dragonzord was needed more in these fights. Another thing that changed was Dora Frankie. In MMPR, the Frankenstein monster and Mutitis were two separate monsters. But in Jew Ranger, they were the same monster. Dora Frankie had two other stages, Zombie Frankie and Satan Frankie. This was caused by Power Ranger's age rating limit. His transformation between the other two forms is gruesome, so it was easier just to make him a different monster. Did you know that the Rad Bug existed in Jew Ranger, but not the way it was done in MMPR? It was never actually important to the series. It was a one-off magical car that was used in the Chunky Chicken episode, then never appeared again. That's why those shots of it racing down the road and flying were used over and over. Speaking of Barza, he is Zordon's counterpart, but the character is vastly different, with the only similarities of them being the ranger's mentor. Barza is a wizard that was around the days of Bandora's attack. MMPR loosely used Jew Ranger's story on the conflict, but changed most of the details. Bandora's war took place 170 million years in the past, and she enacted revenge on dinosaurs and tribes that followed them. This was because her son was crushed by one. It's the reason why many of the episodes involve kids. Barza is much like Merlin in King Arthur's story. Before Bandora was sealed away, she stripped them of most of his magic, but they knew someday she would return. So Barza, the guardian beast, along with five that were picked, rested in mirrors when the time came. This is why Zordon didn't have much of a backstory in the series, but the 2017 reboot movie took more of Jew Ranger's plotline to give him one. There's a few things I did skip over in my gear section last time. If you remember, in the MMPR toy line, they released three bike sets. These bikes did exist in Jew Ranger. The Tyrannosaurus battle bike was Roadsaur 1, the Mammoth battle bike Sidesaur 2, and the Triceratops battle bike was Sidesaur 3. This happened due to the lack of usable footage. They only appeared in MMPR for two seconds as a continuity error. Lastly, Tommy's Dragon Shield. On Jew Ranger, it's called Dragon Armor, and when Tyranno Ranger uses the power up, he's called Armed Tyranno Ranger. While we oddly changed the name to Dragon Shield, Power Rangers kept the Japanese naming convention with Armored Red Ranger. For the final section on Season 1 and Jew Ranger will be the attack names and finishers. This has been a consistent oddity with Power Rangers. Most attacks and Megazord finishers never get names, while Sentai gives names for everything. For the Ranger's personal weapons, the Juso Kid's energy beam attack is called Ancient Play. Armed Tyranno's finisher when he's using both swords is Dragon Tyranno Slash. Mothbreaker has two finishers. When he strikes with the axe, it's called Mammoth Breaker. When he shoots, Moth Cannon. The Tricera Lance's finisher is the Tricera Thrust. Saber Daggers, the Tiger Bite. And Terror Arrow, the Terror Shoot. The only weapon finisher MMPR ever named is the Tower Formation, which Jew Ranger called the Babel Attack. Moving on to Daijujin, he's equipped with the Mammoth Shield, which stayed the same in MMPR, and the Power Sword. Jew Ranger called it Kuryuken Godhorn. Dinosaur Sword, Godhorn. Its finisher is the Churl Densetsu Raiko Giri. Super Legend, Thunder Slash. I always wondered if the Super Legends game was named after this attack. Another rare time Power Rangers named an attack is the Cranial Laser. It's called Daijujin Beam. The Guardian Beast and Dino Tinker also have names for their attacks. Tyranno's ground move is the Tyranno Sonic. Jew Mammoth is Moth Blizzard. Triceratops is Tricera Cannon. Saber Tiger is Saber Gun. 
The Pteranodon is Terra Beam. Dragon Caesar's two attacks are Drill Spinning Caesar and Dragon Hurley. Dino Tanker's attacks are Ju Sencha Cannon and Ju Sencha Storm. Beast Tank Cannons, Beast Tank Storm. Gorujin's attacks are Heat Horn, Goruso Dragon Antler, Mighty Dragon Spear Dragon Antler, and Cho Bakritz Rujin Zuki, Super Exploding Dragon God Thrust. Jute Daijujin's attacks are Kaiser Burst and Empire Attack. And the most powerful finisher in the entire show, Kukoku Daijujin's Grand Banisher. If you're curious how foreign words work in Japanese, I'll give you a simplified explanation. When it comes to English words, Japan uses katakana. Each of the symbols represent the phonetic sound of English letters. They don't directly translate one-to-one -to, -one to each of our letters. Due to the way Japanese is structured, several English equivalents don't exist, like V, L, and TH. So other symbols are used for them. This is where the accent to English words comes from. In Japanese, you can't deviate on how the symbol is pronounced. In English, when we say the word sword, but when we use D and donkey, it sounds different. And because symbols mostly represent two English letters, when you pronounce sword in Japanese, you would say it as sodo. The symbol used for the D in sword is do. It's also used in the word donkey, so it sounds the same way. Here's another example, moth cannon. Again, Japanese doesn't have a symbol for TH, so they use tsu as a replacement. So when pronounced, it's mosu. Mo -su, and canon uses the symbol ki, so canon is pronounced kyanon. That's why Japanese pronunciation is so different from English and why they love shortening English words. It's easier for them to say, like, Armadimon in Digimon Adventure Zero Two, Armadillomon is extremely hard to say in Japanese. And one final bit of info, at the bottom of the Jew Ranger logo, there's Japanese writing. It says Beast Alliance. I hope this made it clear for you to understand Japanese and how they can use less symbols than English uses letters. If you have a suggestion or a topic you'd like me to cover, leave a comment down below. I may use it in next week's video.